Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's rocket shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed, crowdfunded space rocket, Spica. Before we get into the making of our first coaxial fuel injector, we first have some special announcements. First of all, mark April 4th and 5th on your calendars as we will be conducting the largest rocket engine test campaign in CS history and we want to invite you to join the live stream here on YouTube as well. We definitely owe you, our supporters, some hot fires, and this time we hope to deliver in heaps. The campaign aims for 15 burns throughout the two test days, and although we have previously ran as many as 7 static fires in a single day, this time things are a little bit different as we will be switching between 6 new coaxial swirl injectors to validate different mixing patterns, different subtractive and additive manufacturing technologies, as well as different approaches to cooling the chamber walls. All the testing will be done on our tried and trusted BPM-5 engine that flew on the Nexo-1 and Nexo-2 rockets. But really our main objective is to get as much data as we can to inform our BPM-100 rocket engine design for the crewed speaker rocket. If all goes well, this will be a huge milestone since the data we will get will allow us to begin manufacturing the massive BPM-100 injector, which will be almost as big as your 20-inch rims. Now, sadly, the current COVID restrictions in Denmark don't allow any in-person spectators for these tests, but we hope to see and talk to you in the live stream. We encourage you to open up the link in the description in a separate tab and set a reminder for the live event. And lastly, before we make some fuel injectors, we have enabled YouTube memberships on our channel if you wish to support our crowdfunded space program and all the rocket hardware that comes along with it, as well as these insider videos into building rockets. The membership options and perks are the same as the support options on our website at www.copsod.com, including a monthly prize draw and flying your name to space on the speaker rocket. We all greatly appreciate your support in keeping this project alive, and now let's get on to the episode. This is the big now. Um, we've got the first of our injectors all pasted up with uh, silver solder paste. It's in the vacuum chamber and all we need to do now is to just close it up and then uh, start up the ceramics oven and then hopefully we'll have a perfect brand new injector when we're done in a few hours. So here we go. So, hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Sovortos rocket shop. Um, I just wanted to give you some insight on the progress of these uh, injectors that way we are preparing for our next static engine test. The next static engine test we will be doing will be featuring six injectors in two different materials, uh, testing out different configurations of the swirl injector principle that we are trying to validate for the BPM-100 engine. So this is what a swirl injector looks like for the BPM-5 engine, our old workhorse, which we will use to test and validate this injector technology. Um, this is one of the stainless steel uh, injectors that has just been soldered and uh, and cleaned and what we as this will be one of the of the uh, two different uh, materials that we will be testing one will be stainless steel injectors and the other one will be brass injectors so the soldering process actually went pretty well we uh, we had to do a couple of uh, tests just to make sure we got the process approximate right same for the temperatures and then we took a deep breath and we put one of these uh, injectors in to start with because we have to solder a lot of things in one go and they're kind of difficult to rework so we had to get it right. <clears throat> Visual inspection shows however now that we've actually soldered two of them that it looks very promising um, but we have to verify this. So for the next steps in the uh, up to the uh, static engine test we have just two more steps left now. Uh, one of them is that we have to uh, we have to leak test these injectors. As mentioned, we can't have uh, liquid oxygen from one side mixing with ethanol on the other side. That could go really badly. So we have to make sure that there is a complete seal between those two sides. Um, we'll be using a little bit of uh, vacuum technology and a few other tricks. Uh, just to, to try and, and make sure that there is no leak between the two sides. So once that is clear, then we have one more thing left before we actually uh, do fire these up. And that is a water flow characterization of these injectors. 
Um, this is mandatory. We've been doing this every time we have uh, been been testing injectors. We did it on uh, on swirl element level, uh, which each of these injectors getting serial numbers and then individual flow characterization. Then we um, do from these results, we uh, we populated the injectors with the best possible combination of elements. And now that this is done, we just need to flow characterize them to see both if if the accumulated flow is what we expect it to be. We could perhaps have uh, have um, by accident blocked some of the holes inside the injector, which can't uh, uh, inspect from the outside. So just to make sure that we have exactly the water flow we were we were aiming at. So once the uh, leak testing is completed, and once the flow characterization is completed, there are no more blockage points left before we just fire this up for real. We've just finished uh, pasting up the uh, the third injector, and this will be the first uh, brass injector with all the swell elements from uh, Hering. We're gonna solder up. Um, brass has a slightly lower melting point than uh, stainless steel, so that's why we took the stainless steel swellers first and well got got the process under control. So now we think we can do the brass injectors uh, with with little or no hassle. So um, I'm just gonna do the final. Uh, preparations here and then this uh, third injector goes into the uh, to the oven for soldering so only three left when this one is okay that is all for now so as always thank you for watching and supporting if you don't want to miss any of our future updates make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space the reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters if you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps and thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.